So I've had the pleasure of caring for probably a couple dozen ball pythons now just in the past couple years. But this is Sunny, my personal ball python that I've had for uh, just about six years now. And he's having an issue that I've never seen in a snake before. Uh, he hasn't eaten in one year, as you know from the title. Nobody would think that looking at this snake, or at least nobody that I've asked so far. So it's kind of ridiculous, and today I'm going to go into basically how this started, what I've tried to do since then, and what I plan to do in the future for a snake that has not eaten a single thing in a full calendar year, from February 2018 to February 2019. And this video is sponsored by Amino. At first I thought it would be weird to sponsor a video about my snake not eating, but I realized this is kind of the perfect time to talk about the app because it's all about community and collaboration and different groups, especially in small niches. For example, the snake community on Amino already has thousands of people and it's the perfect place to meet other keepers, ask any question about your snake or reptile, post any pictures of your snake, videos, polls, whatever. And it's just a very easy and efficient way to meet a lot of other like-minded keepers in any reptile field. Even just scrolling through right now, I see like a question asked less than an hour ago already has three really detailed answers from other keepers. There's also tons of chat rooms where you can just have like immediate DMs, kind of reminds me of Discord, and then the rest kind of reminds me of Reddit. So it's like a mix of a bunch of other great apps. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can join it at the link below. So now let's go ahead and get into the mysterious case of Sunny and his lack of eating. So like I said, let's start all the way back in 2017 and then we'll go up to now and what we'll be doing from here. At 2017, he was eating just fine, like he had every year. Ball pythons are known to go off feed during the winter season, during the winter months, which is also like their breeding season. And Sunny would usually do that. He'd usually go off around like December and then start eating again February or March. The range is usually like November to February, but it varies a bit. Some people try to argue that a ball python should never go off feed but the number of snakes I've seen it in from the number of keepers really just tells me otherwise. I can go into that in another video, but that's not even related, because Sunny almost never went off feed. And 2017 was one of those years. He was eating uh, adult frozen rats at the time. Then January 2018 comes around, he's eating just fine. Other ball pythons in the room were actually off feed at this time, but he's still just chilling. So I'm like, cool, he's doing well. And then February hits, the time that the other snakes usually go back on feed, he just randomly refuses one week. That's normal, there's certain weeks where snakes just don't eat. I'm sure you've experienced that, unless you have like a corn snake because they're the best with eating, they, they like never refuse. But anyway, he stopped eating sometime in February, I don't have the exact date. I was actually around the time that we launched Emerald Scales, which we launched like January 30th, which is the company where we sell and rehome animals. So I was just talking to people on Discord yesterday and someone mentioned how if we got certain python species it's possible that they could have affected Sunny, uh, especially like females. But I went through the list of everything we got that month because we have like exact dates of every animal we've gotten. And during February, we only got leopard geckos, bearded dragons, crested geckos, and male corn snakes. Uh, that was it that month. We got stuff later in the year, of course, that eventually were ball pythons, but nothing in the time that he actually went off feed. So the chance of that affecting it is very slim. And March 2018, I'll be looking at my phone a lot because that's where I have the schedule, of course. March 2018, I was trying about every two weeks instead of one. Uh, he had no interest at this time, as per usual. It's only been a month. Uh, he still has so much strength. It's kind of amazing. But it's only been a month uh, at March, so like, it's still weird the time he went off, but I wasn't worried about it. I was trying, like I said, a little less frequently so that he had more time to chill between feedings. Uh, to make sure he didn't get stressed out by the food. April 2018. Again, only been two months. That's a bit long. You, Some people say you should start getting concerned around this time, which of course I was concerned. I was trying different things, but I wasn't like panicking or worried about his health. This is when I started trying the more simple techniques, like braining the food, making sure it bleeds, uh, thawing the food out in a bag so that the scent isn't rubbed off or washed off, different things like that. I also started trying frozen mice because he was on rats, but sometimes they just go between mice and rats for whatever reason, since he did start on mice. So maybe he just had a taste for that. But again, it was a similar amount of interest, which was like a little bit, but not enough to actually eat. Again, I wasn't doing it as frequently as usual. I'd give him like an extra week or a number of days between feedings to make sure he was not stressed because they do not eat while they're stressed. And then May 2018, we moved houses. We actually moved houses also in 2017, 
uh, but he was eating before and after the move, so it wasn't like that first initial move affected him in any way. Uh, he had like a week to rest or whatever, but uh, in 2017, the move did not affect him at all. So 2018, I assume this would not have an effect either, which we did move again in May. So for this time, I mostly let him calm down. I was setting all this stuff up, which was mostly by myself, so it took a while, and he didn't have like perfect husbandry for a week or whatever. So I just gave him an extra two weeks to make sure he wasn't affected, could calm down, make sure his husbandry is all good and back to normal. But as you can guess, he still didn't eat. So in June and July, I just went back to the usual methods. Every so often, trying basic things that usually work with any other snake that I've had that went off feed. So then from August to October, this is when I was like, okay, it's been half a year. We gotta get down to business. I don't want him losing any weight. I was weirded out because he really hadn't lost any. He looked perfectly fine. I think at this time I was around, he like a scale popped off his head. I don't know if he uh, knocked it on something or what. It was kind of raw, just right on the top. So you can see a little bit of scarring there. That's perfectly fine. That didn't have anything to do with him eating. I hadn't even tried live at this point. So it's not like it was from a rodent or whatever. But this is the time where I did every single thing that I mentioned in another video I did called uh, like how to get a picky snake to feed or why your picky snake isn't eating. So I have that video, you can go watch that. It's like a 20 minute video going over everything you can try to get your snake to feed. And I did like 90% of those things in the August to October area, zero of them worked. So that was stuff like, again, more braining, feeding in a bag, trying different colors, trying different sizes of mice and rats and all sorts of different things. I still hadn't tried live yet, which is what I ended up trying in November. So now we hit November. This is the month where he normally would go off feed around November to December. So I was like, that's not too great. This is when I made a bit more drastic changes. I ended up moving him from his normal glass aquarium, which you can see there, it's still there, um, to a plastic tub, which a lot of people say you should keep ball pythons in anyway. Nothing against tubs, as long as they're set up properly in the right size, I think they work great, but I've always used an aquarium with them for the past six years, but might as well go for it. Set up a decently sized tub, to just see if it would change his attitude. After a couple weeks of letting him calm down, he actually did show a little bit of interest in here, but not enough to eat. And so November is the month that we finally tried uh, live mice and rats. We got some ball pythons in that were eating live anyway, so we had to get some live for them, but I would try them all with Sunny beforehand to give him that chance to eat. And as you might have expected, because clearly he still hasn't eaten, he didn't take a either of those. Uh, the mice, he didn't mind. They would like hang around. I was whole, like basically feeding my hand to make sure they couldn't damage or affect him or anything. He would like give it a lick and just ignore it. The rats, he was basically scared of. They were much larger. The size of a rat that he would eat frozen, but he wasn't used to it moving around so much. Uh, so that didn't work either. But I did just try these on and off. Tried mice a couple times, tried rats once or twice, uh, all live throughout this month, and nothing worked. But he was still showing a little more interest in the tub, so we were kind of gaining hope. And so December is when we tried to assist feed frozen mice. So I've assist fed um, ball python specifically before. Basically it's when you put the frozen mouse directly into its mouth so they get a taste for it. They don't have to go after it or bite it. They're like, oh, it's already in my mouth. I taste it. It tastes good. Now I just got to get it down. And usually that works. Sunny didn't care. He was basically trying to not let me put it in his mouth, obviously, because it's uncomfortable. But even once it was in his mouth, he would just not bite down. He just kept keeping his mouth completely open. Would like, if this is the mouth and this is him, he just, you have to like follow him around because he does not want it in his mouth. But I definitely got it in there well. And he just had exactly zero interest in actually getting it down or swallowing. Uh, this was pretty stressful for him. So we only tried it uh, like twice this month or something. Gave him a lot of time to uh, relax in between because a stressed snake is definitely not going to eat. So January was also just a chill month. It was cooler, than, well like literally chill and just calm chill. Uh, it was cooler. I tried to keep all the temperatures up in the room well. This room gets pretty hot anyway because there's so much in it. But I thought it's like the dead of winter. Maybe if we just wait till February, give him a long time to rest. I did not handle him at all. Then he'd be fine, which actually very rarely handled him throughout the entire past of the year to make sure that handling was not affecting his feeding. And, and then February, which is, it is February, right? Yeah, it's still February. Uh, this is when I tried to force feed, which was actually last week. Force feeding is not just putting it in their mouth, but it's shoving it all the way down their throat. It sounds kind of rough and brutal in a way it is, but it's necessary for a snake that needs it. Like if they're actually dying or something, which thankfully he's not dying, but it's been a long time. So 
we had to try to force feed. Force feeding is not something I've done, unlike assist feeding, which I had. But the problem is I was using an adult mouse, which is very small, like way too small compared to what he should be eating. And the head of it was all the way down his throat pretty well. The body was like all squished up because he was so against doing this. He wasn't like forcefully pushing against it, but he was just pulling back so well that no matter how much force I used, it would not move. Krista, our assistant who cares for a lot of the animals in here, uh, she was able to help me with that. Uh, so like it was two people putting all of our effort into getting this mouse, mouse down his throat and he was not having it uh, as expected, but he was perfectly restrained completely and that mouse would not go down. So today we're gonna try and do a fuzzy mouse which is way smaller, so you can stick around for that, but there was no hope in getting that mouse down. And that leaves us to here. Um, so stats, how's he doing one year after no food? Well, there have been no changes other than his weight. His weight, in fact, he's lost about 100 grams. He started at about 1,100, now he's just about 1,000. That is less than a 10% weight loss in 365 days of no food. 100 grams is something he could gain back in like a month worth of food. His metabolism is ridiculous. It's like the complete opposite of mine. <laughs> like for context, we've had snakes that don't eat for a month in here, and after a month they lose more than 100 grams and they're a similar size. It's not snake-like, I don't understand. I have not seen anyone with the same issue for this long. And if they do have this issue, they would not be this perfect. Like you can see, he is underweight, obviously, but barely, so it's weird. Uh, something else very weird though, which is kind of a health change, is his production in urates. And I'm going to pass out if he's around my neck this long. Look at this strength, it's so weird. How is he so strong? I'm not complaining, I'm just amazed. But uh, urates, so again, mentioning Krista again, she's been here since November, I think. And I was like, wait, have you ever, like when's the last time you cleaned a urate out of his enclosure? And she's like, never. <laughs> and I know I haven't. So he's produced less than maybe five urates in a year. This is to me more concerning than the fact that he hasn't eaten. If you don't know, urine or urates are basically solidified urine. Uh, snakes are very good at conserving that moisture so it just comes out solid. The liquid waste is solid basically. And it's that white chalky stuff that you see in the enclosure. Uh, most of the snakes in here will produce maybe like two to six of them per month, like basically weekly along with their poop. He is is not dehydrated. Uh, you can look at his eyes, look at his scales, the quality of his skin, his sheds have been perfect, his humidity is perfect, everything. He does not look like a dehydrated snake and yet he's produced almost no urates. Uh, there's no impaction at his cloaca. You can easily feel it's very soft. We checked pretty thoroughly. Uh, there's nothing in there, no uh, constipation, no impaction whatsoever. It's kind of ridiculous. So again, no signs of dehydration, no shedding problems, uh, no breathing issues, no respiratory issues. It's pretty easy to check, just pry open their mouth. Uh, his airways are completely clear, he'll open and close them. Looks perfect, just like any other ball python. You can look down his throat, no bubbling anywhere, no bubbling around the nose, nothing in the nose at all. Perfectly clear, you can hear. Sounds exactly how it sh as it should, which is basically not hearing anything. <laughs> and his energy, it's amazing. It's no more energy than he would usually have. Like a snake moving around more than it usually does might mean that something's wrong, but he's always just been this like chill moving around. And you can see him constricting my neck this entire video, just how strong he was this entire time. And then the list just goes on about how many issues I've checked myself that showed nothing. He is, if we got him in, you'd be like, wow, a perfectly healthy snake. He just needs to eat a couple meals and he'll be up to weight. He's all good, that's the only problem. So where do we go from here? Well, the first thing people have suggested, usually rather aggressively, is just fix your husbandry. Obviously something is wrong in the husbandry if he's not eating. I've, like I said, I've cared for him for six years. The first couple years, I didn't really know what I was doing and I had problems. Once I fixed all that, I had like a solid five year chunk of perfect husbandry. Uh, well, of course, perfect, there's many definitions of that, but I had a healthy snake with healthy sheds and a healthy feeding schedule, and that has not changed at all over the past year. It's been consistent up until this point. But because obviously this is a problem, I would triple check his husbandry. I had other people check his husbandry, 
make sure everything is perfect to the best of our everyone's ability, and we've all agreed that it's all good. And even then, I tried different temperatures. I've tried warmer temperatures, that bearded dragon is freaking out. I've tried colder temperatures, just cause like, why not? Maybe he prefers it? I don't know, it doesn't make sense, but we're desperate. Uh, none of that worked either. Well, okay, then why haven't you gone to a vet? It's been a year. Many people go to a vet after their snake doesn't eat for two weeks or something. I've been to exotic vets multiple times now and I have a pretty decent idea of what they're going to do. 100% they do amazing work with all sorts of things. It's crazy how you can just like go in, you have this problem, they immediately know the issue, they know how to diagnose it, fix it, here's the treatment, come back in two weeks, see how he is, it's perfect or whatever. We've had at least three animals that have gone to the exotic vet, like rehomes and rehabs and stuff, and 100% they were they were correct, they fixed the issue and everything. But there's only so much they can do with a ball python. A physical on a snake is pretty simple. The only things like you can't do yourself is like use a stethoscope, I guess. <laughs> but there are more intrusive things they can do to a snake that you shouldn't do yourself. And that's like doing a fecal, but he hasn't pooped in a year. There's nothing inside him. Uh, unfortunately, even if he was producing urates, you can't do a fecal from a urate. Uh, and that's really the only way to check for things like any parasite that would be affecting his diet or whatever. Uh, e either way, the chance of parasites is so low. I wish it was parasites just because that's so easy to treat. But any of the animals we get in or rehabilitate or whatever, they all go through a quarantining period. Even then, even then they never have contact with Sunny. Uh, he's all, I'm pretty overprotective of Sunny. I've had him the longest and everything, so I'm very careful with him. And even then we have not had any other snakes with parasites at any point. So it would be really weird if that was the problem here. And the chance is so minuscule that it's essentially not even an option, but unfortunately we can't even check because he will never produce a fecal for us. Okay, well the vet can force feed for you, which that's completely true. I probably will go there if I can't successfully force feed myself. Like I said, today we're gonna try force feed in a very small meal. We'll see how that goes, so that's to be determined. And then a, again, a vet can do a physical, like, like check for respiratory issues and things that I can also do myself. It's not to say like I have exactly zero years of veterinary experience, uh, but many of these things are simple that pretty much any keeper does on a usual basis themselves. And so the one thing that I think a vet could do is blood work. Uh, something that I certainly can't do myself. And we have a pretty good idea of what blood work could show, which are other types of parasites. Most of those would have definitely killed him by now since it's been a year since he had. If he did have something in his blood, that would be a very long time to be in perfect health with that. Again, still very small possibility. Anything is like worth a shot at this point. And then the third and most common uh, suggestion is to try gerbils. Uh, just live gerbils because a lot of snakes have a taste for them. It'll be weird since he's never had a gerbil in his life, uh, but I'd be like extremely surprised if he just randomly took this other road. And again, it's a possibility and we're up for it. But those are definitely the most common suggestions that we've gotten for fixing his issues. So that was a lot of talking. That was a rundown of the past year and some of the things, well, many of the things that we've tried. Again, I am, have very low hopes of what a vet could do that we haven't done although there are a couple of things that are available. But overall, it's just ridiculous how healthy he still is after one year and so many attempts at everything, such perfection all around with his husbandry, his health, his attitude, his energy, everything. It's weird. And I hate that he's going through this, but since a snake does have to do it, I'm glad that at least it's me that has to deal with it so that I can like make content on it because it's really interesting and share it with a lot more people. I'm scared doing a video on this because I know the comments will be filled with tons of suggestions, which is exactly what I'm looking for. It can get overwhelming, but it's obviously worth it for the sake of Sunny and for the sake of sharing this information with other people. So there we go, one year, less than 100 grams lost, um, no decrease in health, no food. So now let's go ahead and move on to trying a couple more things. So it felt weird adding music over force feeding a snake. So I'm just gonna do some narration as we go to kind of give you an idea. Obviously everything we're doing looks pretty forceful, but uh, we were surprisingly gentle. Of course, we had to be like gentle yet confident. So he did not, obviously he seemed uncomfortable, but at no point did he seem in pain. At a certain point I could get the mouse basically into his mouth, but not really down his throat because he was really closing it. I used rubber tongs for this because I knew that my fingers would get stuck to his teeth. Uh, and so at a certain point, it was actually in his mouth, no problem, he was holding on, so we put him down on the floor. After a few minutes though, he ended up essentially 
pushing it back out of his mouth, which was pretty concerning. This was my biggest fear of if he puts the energy into regurgitating it, he's clearly really not interested. Like, more than not interested, but actually does not want that food in him. And there's Sylvester watching. I know people get angry when they see cats and reptiles in the same shot, but oh well. So after a few minutes, we were excited. It looked like he was swallowing, but uh, he began to open his mouth wider and realized that it was actually coming out in the wrong direction. Uh, this also looks pretty gross, unfortunately. As quickly as I could, I got another grip on the mouse, and at this point, he actually did open his throat. It may look forceful, but it was very easily sliding. Uh, there was no pressure against it. At first, I was worried that I might, like, uh, tear something inside, but I felt very comfortable doing this at this point. Went down no problem, got it at the top of his throat, and it slowly began to slide down with a bit of help from him. At a certain point, you couldn't even tell where it was in his body because it was so small. But I just held him vertically to uh, let gravity help him out while he did a little bit of effort himself. And eventually, he actually kept it down. At this point, he just realigns his jaw, which at first I thought he was regurgitating, but luckily it was all good. Uh, realigned it nice and quickly, and he kept it down. He just started moving around as usual, as if nothing had happened. But thankfully, we could see that the mouse was still continuing to travel down his body into his stomach. Well, that's that. Sonny is now back into his tub right now. He coiled up within like two minutes. Perfectly normal. It's like nothing happened to him. So force feeding, uh, that was my first successful time doing it. How was my technique? You can rate me on a scale from one to 10, which I probably don't want to know, but it worked in the end. And like I said, it's so small, it's hard to tell where it is in his body, but I made it pretty far. So he should be all good. We'll see if he regurgitates it. Uh, this is a good ending, I think, to part one. I guess this is part one. I'd like to do an update maybe in a month or so uh, to see, I don't know, do we have to assist feed, force feed? Uh, will he just magically take on his own now that he's had a taste for it after a year of nothing? We'll find out. So yeah, although we hopefully have something good going now, still feel free to leave any advice you have for me or other keepers with ball pythons that do not eat for this long and after we've tried so many things still. But again, you can check out Amino with the link in the description. The snake community is a great place. I think there's like 13,000 people in it already. So plenty of people ready to see your pictures and communicate with and learn from. So that should be fun. But that's it for this video. I'm glad it turned out well. So see you in part two. I'm Alex and thanks for watching.